Hi there. I'm Jeremy Krug, and I'm going to work free response question number one on the 2023 AP Chemistry exam. This is a long problem, and it's worth a total of 10 points out of the total 46 on the free response section. Just so you know, I'm recording this video on May the 3rd, 2023, and the official answer key has not been released yet, so I'm doing my best to share what I think the correct answers are. Just a disclaimer, I do not work for College Board. I'm just a chemistry teacher who's been teaching AP for 23 years, and sometimes I make a mistake. And remember that any answer that is chemically and factually correct will be accepted by the AP readers, even if it doesn't match what's on their key. So with that in mind, here's question one. In this question, we're asked several questions about manganese. And the first part says to write the complete electron configuration for manganese in the ground state. So it needs to look like this, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, and 3d5. Now the question does say the complete electron configuration, and so uh, I, I'm not sure if they would accept the noble gas abbreviation, uh, but that is a possibility. On number two, it says, when manganese forms cations, electrons are lost from which subshell first? Well, normally we lose the valence electrons, so that implies that we're going to lose from the 4s subshell. Those are the ones that will be lost first. I don't believe you need to have an explanation there. So one point for each of those, one point for part one, one point for part two. Going on, we have a, a laboratory question, and it says we have the mass of an empty beaker as 60.169 grams. We have the mass of the beaker with some manganese reactant as 61.262 grams, and the mass of the beaker with the product, the chloride, is 62.673 grams. The question says calculate the mass of chlorine in that sample. So a couple things we have to do. First of all, we need to figure out how much MnCl, or that manganese chloride compound, is there. So we have to subtract uh, 62.673 minus the mass of the empty beaker, and I get 2.504 grams. We also have to figure out how much manganese we had uh, starting with as the reactant. So I'm going to take the 61.262 grams and subtract the mass of the empty beaker, and I find that we have 1.093 grams of manganese. So if we know the mass of the manganese chloride product and the mass of the manganese reactant, we just have to subtract those to find that the mass of the chloride was 1.411 grams of chlorine. So hopefully you got that as your answer. So one point for that one as well. Part C says calculate the number of moles of chlorine. So on this one, we're going to take the number of grams that we got earlier, the 1.411 grams of chlorine, and just convert that to moles. So it's 35.45 grams in one mole of chlorine, and that gives us 0 0.03980 moles of chlorine. So give yourself one point if you got that correct as well. Now part D, it says that we're able to determine that 0 0.0199 moles of manganese was used in the experiment, or, or were used in the experiment. Use the data to determine the empirical formula of the formula uh, of this compound, the manganese chlorine compound. So we have to take the two mole values. The problem gives us this one. We just calculated the 0.0398 moles of chlorine. So if we know the mole values, we just have to divide by the smallest of those numbers, which is the 0.0199. So when you divide each of those numbers by the smallest, we get the ratios 1 and 2. And those values are essentially our subscripts for the empirical formula. So the answer is MnCl2. So give yourself one point if you got that one right as well. All right, moving on to part E, we have the same experiment, but this time here's an error analysis question. It says that the student repeats the experiment, but notices that some of the, the final product splatters out of the beaker as it is heated to dryness. And so when you calculate the number of moles of chlorine, is it going to be greater than, less than, or equal to what we calculated earlier? Well, remember, if you're splattering out some of the product, 
you're actually splatter, splattering out some chlorine as well. And so that means you're going to calculate less chlorine than what you really had, or, the, or at least what we got in part C. And here's my justification. Since the weighed mass of the product is less than what it should have been, the mass of chlorine, and uh, conversely the moles of chlorine, will be less than what was calculated. And by the way, you can follow this through in the uh, calculations. You can just imagine if you had a smaller number right here, instead of 62.673 of it were like 62 two or something like that and just follow those numbers through and you'd have a smaller value for grams of chlorine and likewise a smaller value for moles of chlorine as well. So here we have in part F an electrochemistry question, a galvanic cell, and the question says uh, based on the half reactions write the balance net ionic equation for the reaction that has the greatest thermodynamic favorability. What you have to remember is Greatest thermodynamic favorability means the largest E cell. That's essentially the kind of code for that. And so which of these three, which two of these three, will give us the largest E cell? Well, the way I think about this is think about these numbers on a number line. You got the negative 0.76, the negative 1.28, and the positive 0.15 on a number line. Which two are farthest apart from each other? Well, when you visualize it that way, it becomes pretty obvious that the largest difference between these numbers would be those right there. Now, to be honest, to write the, at the net ionic equation, I kind of do this backwards. I actually like to do E cell first because it helps me to know which one I have to flip. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate E cell first in part two. And I know that E cell has to be a positive number. So, you know, I have to put these two. Uh, voltages into the equation such that E cell is positive. And the only way that works is to put the positive 0.15 volts in the cathode slot and put the negative 1.28 volts in the anode slot. So when I do the arithmetic here, I get that my voltage or my E cell is positive 1.43 volts. And remember, that the one that we flip when you write the balanced net ionic equation is the anode. Flip the anode. Or as I say, flip an ode. And so when you write this out, the cathode, which is the manganese half reaction, stays the same, so it's not going to be changed. The one that we flip is the anode, which was the zinc half reaction. So that one gets flipped from the way it was written in the chart since it's actually an oxidation. So now we can add these together. You notice that several things will cancel out. We have these water molecules that cancel. We have the two hydroxides that cancel. And we actually have the two electrons. Those two electrons are what are transferred in this process. So the two electrons are out. And when you add everything up, there is your overall balanced equation. We have zinc solid plus two manganese four oxide solids yield zinc 2 oxide solid and manganese um, 3 oxide solid as well. So that's the half reaction there. So give yourself one point if you got uh, part 1 and one point for part 2. Now in this next section it says calculate the value of delta G. We have to remember that delta G equals negative NFE. So we're solving for delta G. And there are two electrons, and that two comes from the fact that we canceled out two electrons whenever we added everything together in that last step there. F is for Faraday's constant, and then E is the E cell that we just calculated in the last step. So when you multiply this together, we find that delta G is negative 276,000 joules per mole, because, you know, this gives us volts are joules per coulomb, but the question says kilojoules per mole. So we have to divide that by 1,000 and get the answer of negative 276 kilojoules per mole in the reaction. Now part four says that a student is claiming that the total mass of the battery decreases as the battery operates because the anode loses mass. Uh, I disagree. And the reason I disagree is that, you know, yes, that anode loses mass. The fact is the cathode gains mass, or like I said in my review, in my review video, the cat gets fat. So we can't use uh, 
that as a justification. What I would use as, as a justification is the law of conservation of mass. That tells us that mass is going to be conserved within a chemical reaction. So as long as this battery is not defective or corroding or something, the, the battery's mass should not uh, be, be changing. I hope that was relatively easy to follow, and I hope you got as many of those 10 points as you can. Check out the rest of my channel for everything you need for AP Chemistry. I hope you like it and find it helpful. Take care, and thanks for watching.